video is to show you how to set up Repetier Hosts software to set up print jobs and run print jobs to a Maker Gear M2. Uh, the Maker Gear M2 is a great 3D printer. It's reasonably uh, cost effective. Uh, it has a high performance value, but the software that it comes with is not great. So Repetier Host is free. Um, sometimes they ask for a donation, but that's optional. Uh, but otherwise, great software however it is tricky to set up so i'm going to go through how to get this set up to run a maker gear m2 uh, so the first thing is you don't have to actually be connected to the 3d printer uh, so right now i have the printer turned off do not connect it but it will connect through usb uh, i'm going to go to print settings and uh, mine's already set up so i'm just going to show you and you can pause the video at any time uh, to check and uh, make sure that you have the settings as it shows but when i click on printer settings um, this window here comes up, uh, you'll name it Maker Gear M2 or whatever you like. Um, and one thing you want to check is some of this is just the defaults when you first open up Repetier Host uh, with a couple of changes. This is going to run on port COM3 uh, at uh, 115200 uh, baud rate. Everything else can stay the same there. Under printer, uh, it's set to auto detect the firmware. Um, you can see the speeds and travels, uh, temperatures and whatnot that you want to set your defaults to right there. Uh, park position, uh, I choose somewhere in the middle. Um, we'll talk about the size of the print plate on another uh, tab there, but ultimately this is kind of where its home position is or where it goes to park. Um, I choose a sort of in the middle number here so that it doesn't uh, you know, accidentally crush into the uh, actual plate. Extruder, there's only one of them. Um, you can set the maximum uh, temperatures and, and such there, volume. Diameter of the print head that comes with it is a 0.35 millimeter. Printer shape. So the print plate on here is rectangular in shape. Uh, it is a classic printer uh, under the type. Uh, the home position, I do not do 000, zero, zero like most will do in, in some printers. And that's because this one has these little uh, plastic clips that hold down the print plate. And uh, if you do 000, the print head itself will careen into those. Um, so we've got our uh, minimums, maximums uh, in terms of X and Y, and then our Z uh, is identified down uh, or on another tab. So we have our um, print space is 200 millimeter width, 250 depth, and 200 millimeter height. <clears throat> You don't have to worry about anything on scripts in advance. Uh, and then once you have those set up, click OK. Again, save it as whatever you name. Now, that is not all the settings. If that were it, that'd be easy. So now we have to go to the slicer tab. So there's three different slicers to pick from. This one seems to work best with the Maker Gear. Uh, it's the slicer with the three R uh, for the E. And when you click configuration, it takes a few seconds to open up the window, but it should bring up the slicer settings. There are, if you're using version 2.2.2 or newer, the tabs automatically open. Otherwise, if it's an older version, you just click the little gears and they open up. So print settings, uh, you will again, save your settings and name it what you want. I have one for supports and one without, uh, but initially you'll come up with default and then you'll see some things that I've changed. So I'm just gonna go here to my one with supports and we'll talk about what each of the settings are. So we're starting here on layers and perimeters again. If you need to pause the video to check your settings, I'm not going to talk about each one because there's a lot. Um, so you can see here layer heights, I'm doing 0.2 millimeters. This is uh, adjustable. Certainly you can change that if you want thicker layers or thinner layers. Uh, certainly that will change the time of a print job. Uh, first layer height, I like to do 80%. And you can see most of those settings are the same as the default. Infill, this is how much uh, it, plastic it puts in the middle of your print object. Um, you can, again, adjust this to whatever you like. Uh, you can t play around with it depending upon the part, what it needs, how strong it needs to be. Um, I'd say if you're just looking for quick prints, 10 or 20% works fine. Um, the fill pattern is up to you. Uh, they all work pretty well. I, I tend to like honeycomb the best. Um, other than that, the settings here, I think, are mostly the same as the default. Skirt and brim, uh, I tend to use skirts. Uh, I very, very rarely use brims unless you have a small part that has a very small area that touches to the print plate. 
uh, in which case then you want a brim. A brim is actually attached to the object that you then trim off, whereas a skirt does not attach to the object. The reason I like to use skirt uh, is that sometimes the when you the printer starts printing the plastic material doesn't always extrude right away it sometimes has a little bit of a, a lag time behind it so by doing a skirt it makes sure that it purges out uh, that print head before it starts you can adjust the number of laps that it takes if it's a small object maybe more laps if it's a large object you can go down to maybe two or three um, and set a distance away from the object. I go with five millimeters, that usually works well. Only one layer, I wouldn't waste your time doing more than that. Support, so this is, again, I make one with supports and one without, otherwise the rest of the settings are the same. So if you do want to print with model support, that's where it's going to build a structure that you then have to tear apart, but it prevents uh, a model from collapsing on itself or anything of the sort. So you obviously would turn on supports and then you can tweak and adjust what you need to from there. But ultimately, this is the settings that I start with, and, uh, and they tend to work well for most parts. Uh, again, there are different patterns. I've typically gone with pillars here. Um, you can do honeycomb if you want, or rectilinear, which is just going to kind of do a zigzag back and forth in a rectangle. Speeds. Um, most of these are, you got these, some of these are tricky because some are percents and some are actual speed, uh, millimeter per second. Um, so if you see the percent symbol, that's the, that's the difference. But otherwise you can plug in either one to, to all of them. Uh, but these are the speeds that I found work well uh, with the Maker Gear M2. And again, some of that down the bottom doesn't really affect us at all. Uh, and some of that is consistent with default, but there are some changes there. We don't have multiple extruders. Uh, there's just the one, so most of that doesn't matter. Um, advanced, I believe this was all left as default. Uh, I don't think we changed anything. Uh, nothing there to worry about. And, okay, so let's go to the next. So I'm going to skip filament settings for a second and go to printer settings. You might think, well, we didn't already do that. We did in Repetier Host. However, this is actually software within another software. So here we have to set it up again. So, and this has some different settings. So here under the general tab, um, bed shape, certainly you click there and you can type in the same as what we set before. Uh, it is 200 by 250. Uh, the Z does not get set there. The Z offset. So this is, um, how far it is from what the printer sees as zero. So you'll notice I have a negative 0.1 here, negative 0.1 millimeter. So uh, you may need to tweak this or adjust it, but I have found that if it's set to zero, uh, the initial layer doesn't quite attach to the, to the glass plate. Now, if you have um, fine adjustments or if you have to go through, you know, sort of a zeroing out uh, process, Maybe that will be different for yours. Um, when you use the initial Maker Gear software, it does make you go through that process um, and can vary a little bit. Uh, I've also found that if you put additional layers such as um, uh, masking tape or painter's tape or something like that, you may need to tweak this value to compensate for that. So I usually do a quick test print. Once I have it set up and I know that it works well, I keep it there. And this is the setting that has worked well for me. Uh, make sure that this matches what we set up before. Now, this one is something that you'll want to pause the video and type this all in. So all of the start G code and NG code pretty much delete out what was there from default and type it all in as you see here. Now, really the important stuff is what's before the semicolon. What's after the semicolon is really just an explanation of what it is or what it does, which is more or less for you to understand what it's doing with those g-codes. The g-code is what it sends to the printer so that the printer understands what to do. Um, so these are some specific settings for the Maker Gear M2. Again, pause the video and type that all in exactly as you see it. We don't need anything in notes, that's just for your personal desire. If you want to type anything, go ahead. Um, under extruder 1, you want to make sure you set the nozzle diameter to 0.35 set the uh, minimum maximum heights and again when you go to set up a print job these this is pretty much your range for the layer thicknesses if you remember we had set ours at 
which is right smack in the middle of those. Okay. Um, <clears throat> everything else down here, I believe, is similar to the default, uh, but you can, uh, again, just compare and make sure. So once we have those printer settings done, the last tab I want to look at is that one of the middle filament settings. This will change based upon the type of filament you use. Right now, I have it set up for PLA, and it's actually Maker Gear's own brand of PLA, but you can buy any brand of any kind of filament, and this printer can usually print with it. Um, most brands will come with a little card or have information online about what settings work best for their particular filament, and this is where you'd want to set those up. So here for the Maker Gear PLA, you can see the diameter is 1.75 millimeter. That's the what it is off the spool. Um, we have one extrusion uh, head, so uh, the extruder first layer temperature um, I have set to 195, others also at 195. Sometimes it's a little bit different depending on the material that you're using. These of course are on degrees Celsius. The print bed for the first layer I have a little bit warmer so that it adheres better at 70 and then 60 for the remaining layers. Uh, this is optional information. If you wanted to, to calculate a cost for a print job, you can type all that in there. <clears throat> uh, cooling. The cooling fan should be enabled or set to auto cool as it needs. Um, and you can see here uh, minimum, maximum fan speed settings, 35 and 100. And uh, you can uh, see from there what to do. We don't have any custom G-code here. This is really the default, so that can all be left alone and uh, we don't have to worry about overrides or notes. And that's pretty much it. Make sure that you hit save on each of these so that you've got it there for the next time and uh, it should remain even when you go to update if there's a new version of Reptier Host. As long as you don't uninstall it, it should uh, keep all of your settings in there. All right, thanks for watching.